Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at an interesting piece of Enterprise hardware, which is almost 20 years old, and it's this, the MRV LX-4008S101AC. <laughs> this is what's called a secure console server. This would have been used in, a in an enterprise or a data center for managing several pieces of equipment remotely, but over serial. So not over Ethernet or KVM over IP, which we'll get into, but rather the traditional DB9 or other form factor serial ports. So we're going to take a look at this thing, why I think it's interesting, some of its unique features. We're going to wire it up, rack it up, and get it running. So this thing lets you connect physical machines or devices via serial and either remotely access them via the built-in modem or whatever local area network this appliance is connected to via the ethernet port. This particular unit has eight serial ports available. They're all over RJ45 connections. So these look like ethernet ports, but it's actually serial over RJ45. This is where the eight in the name comes from, along with a regular NEMA style connector, hence the AC in the name. It's also sporting a 10 slash 100 megabit ethernet jack. This is what made this unit appealing to me because I can hook it up to my home network and play with it. And it's also got a 56K modem for dialing into the device remotely and a dedicated management serial port, which you would use for managing this device on site over serial with another machine. So why did I buy this? <laughs> a, I liked how it looked. B, I'd never heard of such a thing before. So most of my professional career and adult life I've lived in a world where everything is either attached over the network with Ethernet or Wi-Fi. So, of course, I knew about serial connection and uh, it's been around forever, but I'd never really thought that in an actual data center with many, many devices and servers running, you'd actually need something like this to manage them all. It makes sense in hindsight. And most importantly, it can connect to my network and be rack mounted. So you have to remember back when this thing came out in the early 2000s, KVM over IP was still relatively new and definitely expensive. It's still expensive. So it's prohibitively expensive for me to buy old KVM over IP equipment, even for my own rack, just for fun. So managing physical servers and hardware was primarily done over serial ports. So from MRV's own white paper on their in-reach line of products, which is this one is from, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. The serial console port remains the primary configuration and troubleshooting interface for many devices because it guarantees a means to manage the device under any circumstance. And driving their point home, Although KVM over IP connectivity solutions are beginning to appear on the market, performance issues may be experienced. For example, servers cannot be effectively managed using KVM over dial-up modem connections due to the inadequate bandwidth. So of course, this is from MRV's marketing material at the time for this in-reach line of products. But if you think back to the early 2000s, it was, it was true. So dial-up was still around, broadband internet connections were not entirely prevalent, and in data centers, probably especially small data centers, they were just transitioning over to gigabit ethernet, something we, we take for granted in our homes now. And so back to this in-reach product line, this is what actually really got me interested in buying this unit. So they had a whole family of products that promised all sorts of upgrades and modularity uh, across the system. There were power control units, remote alarm management units for server racks being opened, temperature and humidity sensors you could plug in. In fact, you could plug them into this unit I'm demoing today. And MRV promised a scalability modularity to these units, allowing you to add more and more appliances as your data center grew. What's more, this very console actually has an audit tag from November 4th of 2022, which implies to me that this may have been in service up until the end of last year, almost 18 years. So I think machines like this are actually the reason we have serial connections still to this day on some of our more modern equipment. For example, I have two Dell servers in my network rack, an R720 and an R510. And they both have serial management ports next to their network-based remote management ports. And in fact, the triplet UPS I recently bought, I've done a few videos on that, it too has an RS-232 serial port uh, that you can manage it over. So just to drive the point home, even microcontrollers like this Raspberry Pi Pico or this ESP8266, while you do plug in to the USB, it's actually translating that to serial with something called a UART behind the scenes. So serial is still with us, very much with us today. But that's enough talking and background about this thing. Let's actually dive in and we'll power this thing up, log into it and see how someone would have actually remotely managed some devices with it. That's actually quite the treat. So we're gonna have to fire up a Windows XP VM. This thing actually hosts a web GUI that you can log into, which is awesome uh, with a Java 1.4 applet. So we're gonna go back in time 20 years to what the internet used to be like. And then after that, 
we're going to actually get this in the rack. We'll try to hook up those Dell servers to it, and we'll definitely get a couple of these microcontrollers uh, hooked up to it, and we'll be able to look at them uh, via the management UI over Serial. All right, so first we'll start with some baby steps. I've got PuTTY open here, which is a terminal emulator. And I know because I looked at my router, when that MRV console booted up, I've got it powered on in the other room. It was served 192.168.153. So we'll go ahead and try to SSH in there. And this will take a moment. So if you try this in a Linux terminal, it's going to complain about all sorts of errors because this thing is running an ancient Linux kernel version, which we'll see in a second. So it's ready for us. The default user is in reach and the default password is access and we're in. So the previous owner or maybe the eBay seller factory reset this thing to defaults, which I was a little worried about. So that's nice. It's a, it's as if it just came out of the box in 2004 right now. Uh, and in fact, we can say show clock. This thing thinks it's Saturday, January 1st, 2005. <laughs> uh, and it's been on about 31 minutes. So I suspect the CMOS battery inside is dead, but that's okay. We can type enable and the password is system. And so this means we're a super user now, the double chevron there. And we can type show version, and we can see this thing is running Linux kernel version 2.6.14.3, which is from somewhere in 2005. So it's, it's up there. And one last thing before we hop over to the web GUI, we can do show port async. And remember this had eight ports, so we'll take a look at port one, and you can type characteristics. So show port async one characteristics, and this will tell us all about that serial port. And you can see it's baud rate, 9600. That was pretty typical of the time. A banner, some, so some text it's going to show, and all sorts of other configuration details. And so now what we're going to do is the fun part. We're going to boot up a Windows XP VM. We're going to launch IE7. And we're going to take a look at the web GUI that this thing is hosting. All right, folks, now for, for the fun part. Bet you haven't seen this in a while. Here we are in Windows XP, a VM running in my Proxmox instance. This is Internet Explorer 7. And what we do is we go to 192.168.153, where the uh, console is running. And you can see it's already serving up a website for us to load the Java applet. I think it's called an applet. So you can say, open the console, and <laughs> here we are. So we talk in reach, access, and it's doing its thing. And check this out. This is a Java applet being hosted by that machine I was just showing you. And you can you can configure everything. And I just wanted to point out over here in the interface, we kind of take it for granted these internet protocols that we all rely on every day when we connect devices. This thing is 20 years old. I plugged it in, did nothing else. This ancient Linux version powered up, got an IP from my modern network, 192.168.153. Uh, and it's working great. I'm able to just log right in, which is awesome. Also, isn't this a blast from the past seeing this Java app <laughs> and just the UI? And did you see how fast it loaded and how easy it was? Because this VM already has Java installed. It's just a, it's such a, a time capsule here. I'm, I'm like loving poking around at it. So the only important thing here really for us is you can configure all the ports. So you can configure them with... Um, authentication and their speed and all that, everything you could ever imagine. I'm not going to pretend I even understand a lot of this stuff. Uh, for me, basically, I'm going to leave everything off and leave it at 9600 and we'll start trying to get some stuff connected to it. And one interesting thing is, so I got this remote access. I can click connect here. Uh, we can do SSH. And here I am actually loading up a CLI and it's trying to talk to port one. So if there was a serial device plugged into port one, which there will be soon, uh, we could interact with it in this terminal. And that's what we meant by remote management. So someone way off site uh, from the data center that was hosting this thing could log in and have access to every single machine on these ports and perform system, you know, OS upgrades, read uh, certain measurements. You can see, as I mentioned earlier, this thing is capable of using MRV sensors basically as the port and the, the power management stuff. It's all right here. That's part of their whole integrated ecosystem. So now what we're going to do is let's go rack that thing up, try to plug in some stuff to it, you know, actually physically, I'll go over that and what it looks like to use RJ45 to DB9 and all that. And then we'll come back here and see if we can interact with those things. Oh, we got to do this while we're here. Uh, 
Look at that fade to gray. Say what you want, but XP had some character. All right, got her racked up, pointing backwards out of the rack here. So this is actually where the rack ears were when I got it off of eBay. So I suspect in its previous life, it was pointing backwards as well for easy access to the machine. So you can see obviously the front of it is here. And so here's our setup. The Dell servers were a bust. I messed with them for two hours or so. And basically you can actually just intercept the boot process with serial. You can't really remotely manage them once they're started up. As I understand it, maybe I don't know what I'm doing, but that's fine. So to illustrate our point here, I'm gonna have these two small microcontrollers, ESP8266s. And what they are configured to do is they're constantly just spitting a message out over serial when you connect to them. So for example, I've got this one wired up here to this Windows machine and I'll open up a comm terminal to it. And you can see it's just saying hello from ESP number two. The other one says hello from ESP number one. And then what we'll do is we'll also configure this machine to let us log in over the serial cable and we'll get that wired up to the MRV. We'll get these two guys, try to wire them up to the MRV. And then we should be able to remotely interact with these serial devices uh, in that web GUI I just showed. All right, so I had to take quite the detour with the cabling. So my whole plan was I had bought these RJ45 to DB9 connectors on Amazon to connect regular serial ports to the MRV. So I'm waiting five days for these like a chump. And it turns out that MRV uses a totally different <laughs> wiring scheme than these commonly found adapters here. I have no idea if this is standard or if MRV is standard, maybe there is no standard, but long story short, I had to make my own cables. So I started digging around because I was banging my head and I could only get a blinking cursor. I couldn't get serial in, serial out. Everything was wired upright and it looked like just nothing was happening. And luckily uh, I started looking at the manual and then on pbxbook.com, they've got actually a whole outline and, and really good overview of the cabling you actually need. So this was a waste of time. And I ended up coming up with this prototype and believe it or not, it, it worked. So I was able to get output and then I went back and actually soldered together and made some nicer looking ones. They're not very good as, as you can tell, but they work. So long story short, I've got two of these. I have this prototype board that I use that still works. And so I actually have the MRV working and we can remote in and look at some of these devices over serial. All right, this should be the last look at the wiring job. So on ports one and two, they come up here and they're attached to the little microcontrollers that are spitting out hello from one, hello from two. This is one of the cables I made. The other cable goes back into my little prototype board. It still works. And then the third one, port three is connected to this machine here uh, over serial. And if we come up to this machine, it is just sitting here waiting for input from on that terminal device or it can send output out. And so let's go back over to that remote management and via that GUI and some Telnet login, we'll be able to talk with all these devices. Okay, if you made it this far, the moment we've all been waiting for, actually managing some serial devices with the MRV. So let's go over to the async ports and you'll remember that port one has a little microcontroller on it. Port two has another one and port three is that PC in there. So let's connect to port one over Telnet, that's fine. And there it is, it is spitting out hello from ESP8266 number one. And just to show another way that someone might administer devices, we'll just use Telnet in a Linux, Linux prompt. So Telnet 2200, that port is the second port on the device. So the device exposes all these over Telnet and I think SSH. So there it is saying hello from number two, the second microcontroller. And then we'll bring back the management interface. Let's go over to port three, connect to that. And you'll see that in the bottom right, it says online and it's just sitting here. So this is just a serial connection between the LX console and that PC serial port. So anything I type here will show up over there. Anything you type over there will show up over here. Obviously that's not how you'd manage a computer. It's just for illustrative purposes. I don't have management software on that computer, but I'm going to run over to the rack. I'll type something and you guys should see it happen right here.
All right, I'm back and there you have it. It says hello from the rack. That's what I typed in on that console over there. And so we've done it. We have <laughs> successfully wired up with the right wiring, uh, the right, wire, right wiring scheme, uh, three devices over serial to that MRV console and we can remotely manage them the way someone might have managed servers back in 2004, 2005. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you found that interesting. The more I worked on this video and played with that console server, the more sort of enamored I got with this MRV in reach family of products, mainly because there's just not a whole ton of information about it online other than MRV's own website that thankfully got scraped really well by archive.org. And there's certainly not a lot of this equipment on eBay. Most of it are these, this exact same unit or one with more ports, you know, 16 or 32 or whatever ports. I got this shipped to my door for 40 bucks. Some of these uh, eBay listings have this very same unit for 300, 400 byte now. Don't know what's up with that. So yeah, did you use this stuff in the past? Uh, were you an IT administrator uh, that used the InReach family of products? I'm really interested, interested to hear about it. And uh, hopefully I can track down more of this stuff. I'd really like to get like the power management particularly some of these temperature humidity sensors. I can't find anything about that online other than the manual for, for this exact uh, console. So yeah, I'd like to get more of that stuff and build it up and see how their ecosystem actually worked together and uh, make more videos about it. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.